lich gonna have your mana. Listen up, I frost blast, then I sacrifice, and then I pull the creep wave a little closer, a little closer. Tower armor on your ass, chain frosting. It's bounce to bounce to bounce to bounce on the hero, and then you dance. Lich gonna have your mana. Stay frosty, stay frosty, chain frost and frost and frost and stay frosty, chain frosty, frost and frost, stay frosty, chain frost and frost and stay frosty. Listen up, I'm Lich. I used to be a mage, but that was like 3,000 years ago. Now I'm dead, and I don't care if you die, because I'm evil, bitch. Name's Lich. I don't give a shit. Stay frosty. Stay frosty, chain frost to frost, the frost ain't to frosty. Chain frost and frost ain't stay frosty. Chain frost to stay, stay, stay frosty. My name is Lich Chain Frost. Stay frosty, stay frosty. Stay bam, 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 bam. Stay frosty, stay frosty. Bounce chain and bounce frosty. and bounce stay, and stay bounce frosty. and down. Name's Lich. I don't give a shit. This is Roland from Defense of the Patients, a Dota 2 podcast. We'd like to thank you for listening, and we hope you're enjoying our content. If you are, tell a friend. Find .p on defenseofthepatients.com, or go to iTunes to download the show and leave a comment. We will read the best on the show. Also, you can go to Facebook and give us a like. Sincerely, from everybody here on the show, thank you for listening to Dot P. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Defense of the Patients, a Dota 2 podcast. I'm your host, Cyphus, sitting here with my co-host, Roland. Hello, everybody. And uh, a lot, a lot of Dota the past three or four days the most we've ever had before oh yeah a show uh, and weirdly enough not us playing together in the same room no. as usual have you been playing with your girlfriend playing normal matches playing ricky matches oh yeah rookie oh. i mean sorry rookie. Uh, oh yeah and rookie oh, yeah. matches not ricky yeah. sorry yeah. rookie uh, ricky matches rookie ricky matches yes um no that I, i'm just gonna dive right into the ricky talk i gotta yeah go for it it's, so it's bursting. It's, uh, it happened because of the in-houses, which we've been doing a lot of. We did of a random, uh, didn't we? Yeah, I think Wasn't it was an, an all random. It was probably an all random. It was an all random. That forced me to play Ricky. I think, and you guys won, and it was that Ricky, and everybody talked about that Ricky. Except that I wasn't using Defuse the Blade, mm. that, that match, but we won nonetheless. Yeah. Um, against my team. Against your team, mm. yeah. And, and devastated And I don't even badly. remember it. I don't even remember it. Uh, I think it was the game... I don't care to remember it. Yeah, well, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Go on. Go on about your... Um, <laughs> but yeah, and so then I'm playing with Grandma Ralph, you know, the uh-huh. girlfriend. Grandma and uh, she's learning Lich. So that's mm-hmm. the hero that she's been gravitated towards. Um, doing her first few normal like matches. You do. Like you do. So since we had to play normal matches, she's not ranked yet, not level 13 yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was going to be playing a support. What level is she? She's level three, I believe yeah, now. It's a, it's hard. Yeah, she's got a ways to go. I it, mm. it's I'm noticing how much those battle point boosters that it, the companion we were not gave ready. Us. For no, ranked. I wish we would have done it the way that she's doing it. Honestly, yeah, because we have like five plus seven hundred percent battle points. Like, yeah, uh, rem- like, we wouldn't. <laughs> we probably wouldn't have started the. Weirdly enough, we probably wouldn't have started the podcast as quickly as we did, because well, having the MMR was kind of part of. Yeah, us. yeah, we had to have. I mean, that wasn't. I don't know. Well, when we, were, we when we started the podcast, we I didn't have a solo MMR. Oh yeah, you didn't for a while there. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember. I had like three or four I, games. I still think the show would have started because it was because of you and I driving, you know, talking about podcasts. Oh and yeah, we're like oh yeah, and then talking about Dota. Yeah, and we're like, um, oh, let's do that. But anyway, so since we were playing normal and I knew she was going to be playing Lich, I figured I'd play an offlane carry or a, a carry, mm-hmm. uh, so that I could join her and have her, you know, try to coach her on support, especially Lich. I mean, mm-hmm. he's my most successful hero actually um and i'm loving it what is what is your win rate with ricky you've got your uh it's five and two i think right now two yeah okay so i mean it i don't know it's been fun because at the skill level and especially in those normal matches and i'm realizing now what it must have been like for wazoo to an extent playing with you and i in those normal matches on our way up to 13 
frustrating as hell? Well, both both frustrating in trying to coach and get the new players to you know do th- you know do what they, you need them to do to do what a Dota player should do, mm-hmm. um, but also a big blast when you're playing a carry because we did win a lot of those games with Wazoo in normal. Which gave us a weird... That he was playing Faceless Void or... Against brand new, other brand new players. Yeah. Against completely new and players. And I think that's why he continued to play with us, because it was so much fun to well, stomp. Just and that's like why... we stomp oh, when yeah. we play with Grandma Ralph. Yeah. When I'm playing with Grandma Ralph... Uh, I've never lost. I, yeah, we. I did lose once. We I, did finally oh, really? lose. Uh, because, oh my god. Oh, this is what I was saving. I told you we'd wait and talk oh, about okay, it on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, playing Ricky with her, it was my first Ricky loss... And mm-hmm. we, uh, I had a sniper steal an early kill. Oh yeah, uh, who was brand new? Who had when he stole the kill had six deaths and then fed three more immediately after. Um, an invoker who was feeding mid and fed a Zeus who uh, hit a twenty like four ish minute uh, refresher and ags combo, which meant for me every three minutes I was dying. Every three minutes it was over. It was game over. I just knew. I, I mean, you could set your watch by it. It was every three minutes I was dead, uh, because that. I, How many other people were dead? Oh, was it like double, he, he triples? Was, every he was time? triple killing. He was triple killing at that point. <laughs> Imagine how um, awesome that would be to be that Zeus. The invoker had fed him seven kills um, within the first fifteen minutes, so you can see how he managed to snag that twenty-five minutes. It's always scary to axe. see an invoker at our level. <laughs> well, and in the normal matches. Yeah, you're like, <clears throat> oh god. Um, meanwhile, the the safe lane where we were not was not going well. Um, and I got four kills stolen from me. I had zero deaths and four assists. And the invoker, who was feeding the Zeus, says, how do you have no kills with Ricky? He's the easiest hero. And I, I, don't said, know, I don't disagree with the latter. But. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, go look at my assist. Like, I, got, I, I had a, like a near rage moment. I was like, you go look at my assists. That sounds like a rage moment. Isn't oh, no. <laughs> you, and then, so where I, I got called out for rage in this game. Whoa. Yes. By because who? Your so girlfriend? Mid, Your girlfriend? No, well, she gave me a like, wow, you're an asshole look. Oh. Um, but are we, you sitting right next to each other yeah, playing Dota? Yeah. And so she she just looks over at me and she's just completely <laughs> she's not amused at all. Because this Phantom Assassin is down fighting Roche while we're getting raxed mid. And I say and we are like it's so close. Like I'm playing a solid Ricky, and this is a point in the game where if I can manage so you to aren't snag, dying anymore by oh. Zeus? Every three minutes? No, 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 this is shortly... Oh, no, we got raxed. We got raxed in the first, like, thir- within the first 20 minutes. I mean, they just shoved mid lane. Just straight up. <laughs> Phantom Assassin is down fighting Roche. And mm-hmm. I say, hey, it'd be really nice if you were up here helping us defend. We're about to get raxed. Mm-hmm. Phantom Assassin gets killed by Roche. <laughs> while we get raxed. While we get raxed mid. So not just to add insult to injury, it's a team wipe in a rack situation. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was just... It was just Terrible, terrible bullshit. Well, go ahead and give your MMR then. Um, I'm sitting at a 12.09 now on my solo. Cool. Um, and a 15.78 on my party. Cool. So I am not 69 ahead of you anymore. I'm like 22 or something like that. What oh, am I, what's oh, yeah, my MMR? Oh, I, I was going to have you pulled up. You, sir. Good pod right here. Yeah. Click. <laughs> Click. <laughs> 16.33 on your, on oh, your okay. party. Uh, okay. And 1120 on your solo. Okay. So, yeah, I'm probably, that might be 69. I don't know. 16, 1120? 1122? 1633. So you are um, like 65? Mm. No, 20, uh, 55. Oh, 55. Cool. Well, okay. So my state of affairs, the hero that I've, I've been playing, I've been playing my all hero specifically. Um, I've passed a bunch of heroes. Slark I passed. Uh, Morphling I passed. Uh, a bunch. Uh, I, that's all I've been doing. But... My most recent, not my most recent game, but my most recent All Hero win, was with Meepo in one try, and it was <laughs> fucking awesome. If we had the uh, the soundboard, this is um, where the applause effect would. And people could be like, "Ooh, statistically speaking, you're just gonna win a game. Maybe you're carried." No, I fucking kicked ass in that game as Meepo, <laughs> and realized that maybe I have a love for Meepo. Yeah, I know, I know. You had so, a love for Meepo. You had a little short love affair with oh, him when we first. I started. wanted to start with him. I was like, he always oh, the hardest hero. Okay, I want to learn him. And then you guys got fed up after a little while. But yeah. I still did okay. There were games that we yeah, won. They were, yeah, there were games that we won. It was just we were losing more than we were winning. Oh, dude, it was you so cool. You were adapting, for sure. So but we all were. I go into safe lane, and I'm, I'm getting kills, right? I'm getting last hits, not kills. Um, I get my second Meepo, and there's Nature's Prophet uh, farming in the, in the jungle. I'm in safe lane. 
And I thought, you know, it'd be a great idea. Oh, no. Send one of my Meepos on follow for that nature's profit and just soak up some of that experience. So I did. Uh, I want to. I do want to know if people think you're an asshole. Oh, for it's this. it's kind of. I don't know. It's 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 genius in an, to an extent. So the nature's prophet was not happy that I wasn't stealing last hits. Okay, I wasn't even microing this meepo. I was microing my meepo, my main meepo, the meepo prime, in <laughs> um in the safe lane, and I'm getting last hits with him. Meanwhile, I have my second Meepo, Meepo safely, beta. Meepo Beta, <laughs> safely walking through the jungle, just hanging out with Natrix, that's all. I'm just hanging out with him. It's taking half the experience. <laughs> yeah, taking half of his experience. Anyway, he was really, really pissed and he would TP away. <laughs> okay, I already got a c- confession to make and I'm sorry guys, but he would TP away and then you come back to the jungle and I just send my Meepo again to follow him. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, and we won hard, Okay. I will say that, and in the end, the Nature's Prophet was like, that was good play, you could have just farmed the small camp, and I was like, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. As I'm level, like, fucking 25 as Meepo, just wrecking, dude. It was messed up, I apologize. <laughs> I commended the guy for being teaching, um, I thought he was teaching. Um, sure, sure. I'm teaching? sorry, he, I, I did give He a, taught you to not I, do that, yeah. because people don't like it. But, it, but imagine you, you if it really was the imagine if it was coordinated that that you actually did that. I got to level um, I got my third meepo, which is level seven I believe or level nine or I can't remember. Um, I got my third meepo before five minutes, so I had three meepos. And then I was at, I had a meepo in the top lane, I had a meepo in the bot lane, and then I had a meepo following the nature's prophet around everywhere, soaking up jungle experience. So. Um, I got big really, 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 really quick. Um, How quick did you hit 25? I got my Aghanims at like 17 minutes. So I had my five Meepos at 17 minutes. Jeez. So really early. And it got to the point where the people I was scared of at the start, I would just throw out like 100 nets. Just each Meepo would throw a net, and I'd just get them. Axe, he was the one that I was supposed to be scared of. No. Five poofs on Axe killed him. I killed him so many times where I just throw out nets and he's stuck and he's like Rah, fight me and I'd fight him for a little bit and then I'd poof 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 goodbye axe it was fucking awesome I got Meepo in one I just wanted everybody to know I'm really happy about it I didn't everybody, think it was everybody's happen. happy but that nature is I was really intimidated Captain Silver Fox was like yo yeah I, I played uh, bots with Meepo uh, before trying him on my all hero he's like he's hard to get used to and he's absolutely right he is but I, I found this, like, micro where it felt so reminiscent of StarCraft, where there's always units on other sides of the map, right? And so you have to double-click your hotkeys, and it'll take you to each of them. Um, it was cool to be micro two Meepos and have one just Nature's Prophet micro. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but just to micro both of them in lane and soak up two lanes worth of experience and the jungle experience, it was like a level, like, so often it was ridiculous dude yeah. my xp per minute was off the hook but it was a fun game i apologize to that nature's prophet i just was trying to be new meta you know i'm all yeah, about new meta. i'm all about yeah. creating you know so the next time you and... see Ro- next time you see roland play uh sand king and you're on his team just be a meepo and just follow his ass around you, oh you could oh i would yeah. be fine with that sand king's only there for the gold bro but the thing is the creeps would automatically attack that meepo because they attack anything yeah, that's that comes true. near them that's true so while well, you'll play Sandstorm, natures again, I know you will. When, he hasn't come up on my all hero, which I'm really excited for. He's the one that I'm really looking forward to because it's been a while. It feels I've like. played like 70 games of Nature's Prophet. And so, how many with boots? A lot. He like yeah, he was my first complicated hero that I started playing, and a lot of them without boots. Probably 12 to 15 of those games were just literally buying nothing to start the game off. No regen, no armor, nothing. And building a Dagon as quickly as I could, and then teleporting around the map to people who were running away to base and Dagoning them. <laughs> and, and, and the only reason I did it is because I saw a Purge video where Purge is super badass, right? And he's getting all sorts of last hits and taking control. Um, and he did it way cool, but he's like, you know what? I'm going to get a Dagon. It's not advisable. Probably don't do this, but I'm going to get a Dagon this game. And just wrecked it. And then I had one game where I was like, you know probably against playing against terrible people and was just like and on normal most it, likely probably because these were back oh yeah these were normal games. yeah these were for wow. sure normal games and i probably had one game where i was ultra successful with it 
and then I just kept doing it over and over. And I have an apps. I have oh, so I haven't played seventy games because I'm twenty eight and twenty eight with Nature's Profit. I have I'm a fifty fifty win rate with Nature's Profit. You can pull it up. Um. And yeah, I think most of those wins have come from the most recent times I've played him where I get my, you know, 630 Midas. Oh no, I can't flip your heroes. Oh really? I it's mean, it's like 28 and 28, I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna. I think you could like on Dota buff, yeah, probably. But um, I'm too lazy for that, folks. It's like 28 and 28, or 38 and 38. One or the other. I know it's... Who's your next all hero? My next, the current all hero that I'm on is Templar Assassin, who I played bots today, unfair bots. Um, yeah, and granted, I did cheat. I started with 10,000 gold. Because those unfair bots are fucking unfair, dude. I'm level... <laughs> so I played one game, bots, because I wanted to get used to Templar Assassin. I've never really played her. I played one game, bots, and they were unfair, but I didn't realize they were unfair. Because I was like... Until I clicked on him, and I'm level 5, and I'm midding, and I thought I was doing a great job. Like, I'm getting, like, you know, some good last hits. Not every last hit, but getting good last hits. And then all of a sudden, he starts denying everything. This, this bot, like, I could not get a last hit. He was shink as Bloodseeker, shink shink deny, deny, deny. And I click on him, and he's level 9, and I'm level 5. And we have, <laughs> nothing has happened. We've only been in lane together, like mid, each of us. And this, yeah, he got to level 9, and then we just, bam, wrecking balled us, dude. Killed me, like, 15,000 times. <laughs> he, would, he would rupture me, and then I would, I would meld. And that's where Templar Assassin, like, disappears and she's in the same spot. And he dusts me and shink, 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 dead. And it was wow. like, what the hell? A bot <laughs> that dusts me? You know? <laughs> yeah, and, that's painful. And then I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach what? these bitches oh, a lesson. Oh, you know what I realized in normal, by what? the way? What? When somebody abandons, a bot takes their place. Yes, that was a recent thing. I'm, yeah, I didn't be. know that. Because that didn't happen before. Yeah, that was crazy to see. Uh, and yeah. those bots are terrible. Uh, the unfair bots aren't. I bet well, they... no, but I mean in the in normal... The bots are terrible. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had a Sven bot that was basically mm-hmm. just feeding us kills in one game. But anyway, I started that game with 10k gold, okay? So I started another bot okay, game, okay. and I enabled cheats, and I I, start, I said, I'm not going to start with experience. I'm just going to start with 10,000 gold. So I bought a Blink Dagger, I bought a Desolator, and I bought Phase Boots, and I didn't have enough for the BKB that I wanted to buy. And so I was like, okay, I'm good. And I get out there and I get first blood like almost immediately, right? Because I'm blinking and then phase boots and then blinking and phase boots to get into their jungle just searching for a bot to kill. And with Desolator at level one before the game even starts, I'm killing them in like three minutes, right? So I get my first blood. Oh, I even get a double kill early on. Oh, a triple kill. Oh, I'm kicking ass. And then I go to lane and I'm getting all the last hits. Oh, it's great. About 15 minutes in, they just start wrecking me again. And I started with 10,000 gold. Like, wow. that's how good of a Templar Assassin I am. I can start with a Blink Dagger, a Desolator, and Phase Boots, almost have enough for a BKB, and still lose after 15 minutes of playing against these unfair bots. Wow. They, were, they were smart, dude. They, they all backed up, like, way away from me, and I was like, ah, bitches, you're scared, and, like, killing their towers and stuff. And then all of a sudden, they'd all swarm in on me and stun me and then take me down. Like, they knew that I was primary number one, like, to kill him first. It was crazy, dude. Like... AI in Dota 2 is what it felt like. <laughs> like they knew that I, I, I cheated and getting, they wanted to kill me. But I wonder if they're it. getting a different buff being unfair bots. They may be getting more experience than I am yeah, or that's getting more I, gold yeah, than I am. That's, that's what I was That's wondering. how StarCraft worked when you'd play against the uh, expert bots or whatever they're fucking called. Yeah. That they could like build a Colossus in four minutes and that's why it was so crazy to, to play against them because it was like it was impossible not possible to do that. Yeah. Unless you're an unfair bot, and they'd get like every they bring back like nine minerals every time you'd bring back five. Anyway, yeah, Sarker makes sense. Too. Well, let's. Um, t- uh, wh- wh- where are we on? Uh, where are we sitting? You wanna, we're sitting. Want to take a little break, or uh, what do you want to do here? Well, I wanted to finish my thoughts on. Uh, oh, Templar on Templar Assassin. <laughs> I can't believe those unfair bots, and I know a lot of people like can one v five them and win. Don't know how. I don't know who does that. I've never heard that before. I'm sure there's. You, no, there's. I bet there's I'm nobody. sure there is. Uh, so you want to do a Templar Assassin rookie game after this? Only if it's normal match. Yeah, oh yeah. Because well, I'm not, not going to play Templar Assassin or ranked. Especially, like, she's weird, bro. I've got to get used to her. and how, uh, She's weird. I, I realized I'd never played Templar Assassin until playing Templar Assassin. I was like, no, I've never even played this hero. And that's why I had to bots match. But yeah, she's the only one I'm scared of in Oracle next. Like, those are the only... Oh, you only... have Oracle after well, Templar? Yeah, I have to. I know not right after, but Oracle's oh, in the in the pool somewhere. Yeah. 
And that's like, I've gotten past all the heroes that I had nightmares. Invoker, Morphling, um, Meepo. Oof. Oh, I have Earth Spirit still. That's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why even have Earth Spirit? Yeah. You know? No, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. At our skill level, Earth Spirit doesn't exist. You can, yeah, oh, yeah. I never see him. And I, if I you, mean, if, and and if, if you, you do, do, it's a bad random. Yeah. It, it's a bad second random, where they didn't want the first, <laughs> yeah. and then they random uh, again. Yeah, because, you no, know, you're right. We don't see mm. we don't see much oh, Earth and Spirit my, at and all. And I've played him, like, three or four times, and I understand, like, I understand, and I just did air quotes, like, how to play him, but executing it, psh, not happening. He's just, like, a soccer player. Did the, you, have you already done Elder Titan? He's a soccer player. Yeah, I did Elder Titan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because mm. you... Caught, or you I did Elder in one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I yeah. did Elder in one. I started with Visage, and I know somebody else started with Visage in our guild and just got it. H Kun, I think. Um, I believe he had uh, Visage first, which means he's starting the All Hero in the same exact order I had it, because uh, oh, they right. uh, they're always the same order, apparently. Yeah. So we, I well, could... we noticed that whenever I hit Brood. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So he's he literally will have the exact same All Hero challenge as me because I started with Visage as well. Oh, you want to know what's terrible is hmm. we uh, we hit Broodmother up quite a bit here in this uh, upcoming segment with Gorgon. What's yes, going on with Gorgon? He's yes, on his did. way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brood, the entire time we were talking about Brood, and I'll let folks hear it, but I just the only thought I could keep having was, man, that's my next all hero. Is Broodmother? Yeah, I gotta Dude, gotta get Brood. You gotta wait. Point. You gotta look at Dota buff, and you gotta see if you know, or you can think like. Don't want to see Juggernaut. Hate 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 how he spins. I don't want to see Bloodseeker. Because anytime I'm low health, he can see me and all my spiderlings. Yeah. Um, or he can see all my spiderlings when they're under half health. You it's don't just wanna, like bullshit. You really don't want to see Axe. Really don't want to see Axe. Really don't want to see Keeper of the Light. Really don't want to play against Silencer, really. Um, really don't want to play against uh, Jakiro. Really don't want to play against <laughs> Bounty <laughs> Hunter. Yeah. Really no, don't, don't. want to play against uh, oh, Bount- Sand King. Bounty is the worst. Sand Kings maybe yeah, Sand even Kings, worse. Yeah, Sand like, Kings. Like I can keep fucking going. Like yeah. this, uh, this list is it's ridiculous. And that's the thing about Broodmother. Is she's and Gordon oh, talks Zeus. about it. Seeing Zeus. Zeus don't want to see Broodmother. Oh dear God. Don't want to see. And there's more. I'm missing tons. Don't want to see Pugna. Really, Pugna just destroys. Don't want to see Techies. Don't want to. Yeah, get, you're right. You yeah. don't want. It's weird to have a hero that I don't want to see Techies with. Yeah, I don't. There's yeah. It's just too much work for Broodmother to afford the sentries to deal with techies. And your brood's going to die anyway, you're, and you're not a ranged hero. You yeah. are, uh, all, everything about you is melee, except your, your Q, which is a kind of a nuke, which creates your spiders. Um, but she is the funnest hero to play when none of those heroes we mentioned, <laughs> plus some, aren't yeah, in the plus game. Plus another 35 heroes. Yeah, aren't in the game. Yeah. They're, when they're not around. extremely fun. No, I, I, I've noticed that, because when, when she has... Oh, and when she's she also counter- countered by Battle Fury. So that's oh, another yeah. thing. You oh, can just yeah, buy a Battle Fury. I was going to say Sven with Cleave, Kanka with Cleave. Oh, yeah. You Kunk- don't want to see anybody no. with Cleave. Oh, I don't want to be in- against Sven at anyway, all. Anyway, yeah. Ah, Brood see? Mother. Like, that's the thing. You've got to wait for that ha- perfect moment. I have seen some great games with Brood Mothers, though. When, with me when on those- Brood Mother, no, too. No, one in particular, with not with you, Brood Mother, where you and I, where I was supporting you in the safe lane, and we looked up at like six minutes in, and that Brood Mother had taken. All the way up to the tier three. Oh yeah, it can ha- she's crazy. Yeah. If she if she isn't stopped, she's crazy. But she most often is stopped, and even when she isn't stopped, it's not guaranteed. Like they can yeah. still deal with it. Um, if if they have a really 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 good support that's constantly buying sentries, he can outbuy me on yeah. sentries because I need to get my. Well, two people can't. Well, and that's that's the downside. Well, that's what I'm noticing can. playing. That's what I'm noticing playing is Ricky. Um, because I, I'm I'm always conscious of that when I'm leaning with a hero that's a perma invis or pretty much perma invis. Mm-hmm. If I'm leaning with a Nyx, if I'm leaning with a Ricky, uh, if I'm leaning with a bounty hunter, I'm pretty good about picking up sentries to help counter as a sure. support. Um, but now playing Ricky, and admittedly I'm playing with Grandma Ralph sometimes, but mm-hmm. I'm also playing and with your other solo people. MMR is extremely low. Yeah, like I I don't think it's a good. Reflection. But I'm the only one. Who's buying sentries? And when you're pe- playing against a, you know, a standard dual lane, even if you have a support in solo MMR at our level, mm-hmm. it's you trying to buy out buy sentry wards against two people, and yeah. that is a tough process. Well, what I mean by I can't out buy a support like eat like a hard five, um, is I need items. I need to get Vladimir's oh, yeah. offering. So it's like I can't like I buy like a set when I start, 
and I hope that gets me by for like 10 or 15 minutes where I'd notice that the creeps are attacking me in this general area. I put one of my sentry wards down and I kill theirs. And so long as I kill theirs first, they have to put their second to kill my first, and I hope to kill their second with my first. If not, I have a second sentry yeah. to use. Oh, no, if it's that, a ridiculous you know, war. It, it's, a, it's a different war, the War of Vision, which is really cool um, with all these heroes. Well, maintaining your vision. I mean, that's the, Yeah, you know. staying, staying on top of the vision. That, that could be ah, the title brutal. of this episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a break, and uh, we'll be back with What's Going On with Gorgon. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on with Gorgon? And we're back with another What's Going On with Gorgon. Welcome again to the show, sir. My pleasure to be here, as always, guys. Why don't we jump right into some pro Dota news? There wasn't a whole lot going on this week, quite honestly, because, you know, holidays and stuff. But we do have some Star Ladder news coming out. The uh, Team Secret has withdrawn themselves from Star Ladder, so not only them, but also EG will not be participating in Star Ladder 11. Uh, and the teams that have qualified have come in. It's going to be Team Empire, LeJohns, Virtus Pro Polar, Hellraisers, Team Fire, and that is formerly known as Team Sneaky Nyx Assassins. They rebranded this last week and added Fogged, added Fogged instead of Whitebeard. So they had a slight roster change and a name change. Why Invictus the, uh, Gaming's, oh, go ahead. Uh, why the name change? Uh, I, I think they were just trying to, to rebrand with the new member, and they've had a lot of member changes, and they're trying to just break away. I don't know. I haven't actually talked to any of them since the name change. Maybe I should ask them why, specifically yeah, the name change. But I, as far as I know, the only thing I saw about it was a tweet that said, same team, new name, or something like that. So huh, Okay. Um, I'm Sorry. not 100% oh, sure. Yeah. They, they, I know I, I was talking to IX Mike and Ush pretty extensively uh, when I went to New York for ESL1, and... They implied that they were maybe shopping around for trying to get some sponsors for the team. And I think maybe the new name also might have something to do with that. But I don't know for sure. That's just speculation. Uh, maybe because they don't want to be branded with something that's kind of iconic of the game directly, necessarily. That's a great name. I don't understand the issue. I, Sneaky Nix Assassins. I wonder if so there's cool. like a copyright potential issue What about there Team Tinker? Or... Team, I, I, don't, I don't know if Team Tinker has any official sponsors either. Oh wow! So I mean, okay. maybe that I mean is they're 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 also relatively new. As far as I know, they don't have any official sponsors. Because you probably but, can't. I I mean, I, and I'm uh, I'm completely spitballing here. And but it's maybe also it's they've copyright. had a lot of roster changing in the last couple of months. I mean, a lot of it. it. Ush left, and then he came back, and now he's on the team again. And they they just added Fogged, and they they had Whitebeard coming in and out a little bit. They they've they've had some unstable roster issues really since they formed, but especially since the international. And I think maybe. They are pretty sure that this is the roster that they're going forward with, and they just want a new name to to stick it out, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. What's their new name again? Team Fire. Team Fire. Okay, yeah, I'd, I'd sponsor Team Fire. Well, there you go. Well, Team Fire is the only American team to be going to Star Ladder 11, and since EG pulled out, uh, they uh, and, uh, of course, the recent uh, disbandment of Navi US, Team Fire is usually going to be considered your top american team other than eg for the time being at least um are they completely american i mean isn't i know that eg has one uh international fellow right Zai? they are completely american slash canadian i mean tc oh, okay. is a canadian player but they're all from north america okay completely north american that's cool yeah i wish and them the best they are a good team to keep an eye out on them, of course, especially with Fogged. He's a really good player with a lot of experience, and they've all kind of played together in the past. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Fog does on the squad. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, the, the other teams for the Chinese sector onto Star Ladder 11 is going to be Invictus Gaming, CDEC, and MVP. So no VG either for Star Series 11 since CDEC took them out four games in a row. They beat VG, wow. which is... Not very many teams do that. Definitely keep an eye on CDEC. They've, they've pulled up their uh, big boy pants for the last month or so. That's in interesting to hear. Uh, you would, uh, would have definitely expected to hear about VG being. I mean, well, yeah. how do you not now at this point? <laughs> exactly. <you know? laughs> well, that's crazy. What else is going on? Yeah, I read about – I, I know that I just asked the question, but then something popped into my mind. <laughs> um, I read about that whole team secret thing um, mm -hmm. about pulling out, and I read their little uh, – what their management sent out it was like i don't know a page long maybe less um and yeah it seemed like they they didn't do it because they thought it was unfair if they were to continue even though they qualified because of their roster change yeah but yeah it's i don't know if that's 100 percent 
an honest statement, but it is. it certainly has something to do with the fact that they're having some roster changes as well. And, you know, they, they have been participating at a lot of LAN events. They've been having mixed success. They've been performing extremely well all over the place, except at LANs, where they really haven't been winning to the degree that especially their fans would expect. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe this has something to do with that as well, that they're going to do some roster changes. They're going to go ahead and reevaluate the way that they've been playing because they've been kind of pulling a, a cloud nine sort of situation where they, they perform really well all the time, but they don't bring home a whole ton of the W's uh, in terms of tournament wins. But so. they did get two tournament wins recently, didn't they? Yeah, they got at least one. Let me, let me go ahead and actually look up exactly what they're sitting on top of. Um, I mean, I, I don't watch much Dota, but I have seen the Team Secret matches, and God, they are scary. So they have four out of nine event wins for, for their duration as a team. They've, they've won four out of nine of those events. They've been in the money eight out of nine of those events. Yeah, but bear in mind that this is, this is arguably right now the best team in the world in terms of performance overall. So the fact that they're arguably the best team in the world, but they're only pulling in less than half of of their tournaments as wins that that's an interesting sort of divide if if nothing else and i suspect that they might be trying to address this a little bit but look at their consistency though eight out oh, of yeah. nine in the money eight out of nine in the money one tournament they didn't make it i i just i don't know May, are they like freaking out do they just want to be even more badass than they already are it's oh, like, i'm sure i'm sure they're not freaking out about it but i think you know little changes trying to make sure that the roster is cohesive trying to make sure that their team is working together uh, in the manner that they want it to be and trying to make sure that they're fair to other teams during the process. I mean, they've, they've pulled in since they, they were formed after TI, they've pulled in about $240,000 in winnings. Yeah. Dude, it's like putting scrappy do oh. and Scooby do. It's like, why <laughs> fix something that isn't broken? You know what I mean? Hmm. What else is going on? Gorgon? Well, we can talk a little bit about the way the pro meta has been shaping up since we're near the end of December. So I've got basically December's numbers out. Uh, you may recall before I gave a couple of heroes that I said, I think these are going to be heroes that are on the rise. Keep an eye out for them. That includes Zeus about a month ago, and it also included Anti-Mage. Well, both of those heroes continue to rise. Zeus it continues to sit at an all-time high for his pick ban rate. He's at about 34% of games pick banned. Anti-Mage also on the rise. He's now at about 31% of pick ban. Why? Um, what change? I, you know, it's just a continuing focus for the Anti-Mage specifically, a continuing focus on that late game. For the Zeus, I think it's uh, that there's sort of an opening in the meta at the moment as a lot of the heroes that we see as popular, uh, especially since TI, the Razor, the Death Prophet, the Viper, the Centaur Warrunner, and the Skyrath Mage all dropping off. Doombringer recently dropped down to essentially a negligible amount of draft. He's on the rise again now, but he his pick ban rate dropped by about two-thirds over the course of, I want to say, August to November. Um, so, so there's a bit of a gap in terms of what you would consider popular heroes are being drafted, and we've just had some changes in the way the mechanics are working as well. So Anti-Mage is going to come in, and he's going to be one of those really strong late-game carries that can be fairly active once he manages to get his... Uh, uh, excuse me. Once he manages to get his Battle Fury. So he's a very, very fast farmer, but he's also able to, to travel very quickly, which means that he can be fairly active, although he does... He has a reputation to be a bit of a ricer as, as a hero. I don't know that term. What is that term? A farmer. Oh, a farmer? A ricer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that, that they say about uh, uh, Chinese or Southeast farmers. Asian farmers. Sure. They're, they're ricers. I yeah. read an interesting fact about this, actually. Uh, I have a fact app on my phone. So in America, uh, the average farmer owns like 500 plus acres, okay? In China, the average farmer owns less than one acre crazy is, is that <laughs> no. because rice is the, the the primary crop and it's Probably. going to be grown in water and so you don't need as much or yeah, it's just know. because there's less mega corporation also, and farms. also more, more people, people. More probably. people, Le yeah, probably more people, and I don't know how Excuse much room you need for rice. Skew the average. Rice yeah. is yeah. really small, like bananas yeah. and oranges. They're much bigger than like little rice seedlets. Sure, I I suspect that it has a lot to do also with the fact that it's still there's still a lot of. Farmers in rural China that grow for them or their local community, there's not a lot of that in the U.S. comparatively. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of mega corporation farming going on, and so that's going to boost the average a lot. 
But we're, we're talking about numbers of farming is maybe not necessarily why we're here. No, so. it is. And actually, we'll, we we'll need be to back. This. Uh, we'll be back with this American <laughs> Life right after this. No, on this NPR. needs to be addressed. <laughs> Okay, so Team Secret's changing it, changing it up. Uh, Doom, for some reason, isn't getting picked or banned anymore. He's, Zoo- he's on the rise again now, actually. He dropped off because uh-huh. his ban rate dropped off. But his pick rate dropped off just a little bit. Now his pick rate is starting. This is something you happen with, to see with heroes that were popular a lot. If they have a, an era of popularity, they become hugely prioritized bans. And then eventually people will stop being quite as scared of them or they'll stop playing the heroes that that hero counters and they'll stop banning them very quickly. Over the course of a month or two, mm-hmm. the bans will just, just plummet. Yeah, in a weird... And at that point in time, they become a priority pick and you'll actually see the pick rate rise rise about a month after that happens because teams are going to want to still have the value of that hero and that he's not being banned out all the time mm-hmm. yeah so. it's it's weird to see i mean i've only I've been, we've been playing dota since july and i mean we like well, seen kind of things dropped go, yeah off. well we saw like and we noticed that even just coming into it yeah. with kind of his popularity but it was like the, the first ban on every game and yeah like you saw forever. everybody got rid of like and right it's like on. i guess i don't see that as much anymore i see like different things lately that, it's I feel a like and change that for a six morning two that really killed him i, I they, feel like they, we see a lot of light or uh, sorry a lot of faceless and a lot of uh anti-mage bands lately when we yeah play. faceless is maintaining very steady right now he dropped a little bit he he had been up in the 80s and 90s in terms of pick ban he dropped Whoa. now i think he's i think he's now somewhere in the 70s if, if my memory That's serves correctly crazy but he's been steady for about two or three months i don't expect him to drop off the, the, do you know the most uh the hero that has the most elongated era of influence over the game is mm-hmm. Batrider. Batrider mm-hmm. between 2012 and 2013 had 10 months in a row where he had 99% or greater pick ban for pro. Wow. What the hell? So it was like Ten either months. every game or one game he wasn't. <laughs> right. Let, it, it, on average, he was every game. He's still the most pick ban hero in Dota history. Wow. At least for the duration of time that we've recorded pro Dota stats. Because um, he's so badass. And he, he can like uh, fly yeah. over the whole world. Nothing blocks Batrider. Yeah, and they've, they've been nerfing him slowly but steadily, so he doesn't get played as much anymore. He used to be a jungler. He used to be an insane offlaner. still is an insane offlaner. Mm-hmm. He's still today much more heavily prioritized in the Asian scene than he is in the West, but he's an extremely good hero. The reason that you may not see him quite as much is partially because he's, he's a hero that requires a team to play in, in yeah. a big way. It requires your team to, to move in. And so you don't see him necessarily in pubs as often. He doesn't really come into the mind, but he's the most successful hero in Dota history. I love him. I passed him on all hero, and it was a blast. I got him in one. Uh, just he, He's my favorite initiator. He yeah. really is. Like, There's nothing more fun than like flame strike, blink dagger in, uh, catch you with my lasso, and pull you back when you have like five sticky uh, napalm charges. Yeah, it makes yep. sense. The new team. I, I, in fact, mm-hmm. I was uh, – I can't remember which podcast it was. It was probably uh... – Dotaverse, but uh, you've been listening to a lot of yeah, Dotaverse. a lot of Dotaverse lately. <laughs> but uh, they were talking about uh, scoping out the c- competition. I, I, no, they're I, badass. They're, they're not I legitimately enjoy those they're guys. Cool. They're a great show. Yeah, we can um, all live and be happy yeah. together. Oh yeah, you download two podcasts, us and them. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, they were talking about like how Leshrac is kind of one of those heroes. They were mentioning Batrider in that mix, but mm-hmm. like Leshrac is somebody you probably don't see it played a lot because you really require a five stack in order to properly utilize him. Yeah, he's so mean. He's like the catapult. Like, you need soldiers to get the catapult in to take down the tower, right? Like, I love that when Leshrac, like, okay, it's like, okay, we created space for you. Run up to this tower and turn on your W, Leshrac. And he's like, all right. And then he just is like, I'm just standing here in the nature as, like, the tower's like... It's I awesome. would argue that, that you don't see a lot of Lushrak, at least in high levels of play. Not necessarily because he requires a team in, to play, but more because he requires an immense amount of farm for mm-hmm. a small niche amount of damage. He does a ton of magic damage if he gets up a Bloodstone and some additional damage. Yeah. But he's extremely easy to kill. Yeah, he's extremely squishy, squishy. easy to shut down. And and his only additional skill that he really brings is that he pushes hard, which is not and his stun's necessarily obvious. valuable. He's the most yeah. obvious stun. You're like, it's like Leshrak, come on, dude. I know you're about to <laughs> stun me like stop going in the air like that just stun me just and, stand like an, he's a little bit of a spaz you know it's yeah. like a four-year-old trying to grab you yeah he's like i'm gonna stand. stun you and you're like i'm gone now <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> especially in everybody's this, like in who's less rock talking to <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah especially when blink daggers are so popular that stun is is uh, next just, to useless it, yeah it's it, and you know you try and get tricky with it where like i'll start the animation and stop it and they'll be like oh run away spikes 
and then it either try requires and get them. a lot of skill or a lot of your opponents being bad. Yeah, <laughs> one of those two. It's <laughs> pretty true. He's a cool hero. I have yet to get him on my all hero. Can't wait to get the Leshy. He's he's a good hero. He's a really mm. good hero, but he he doesn't necessarily fit the competitive. He's a, he's scene, a pub stomp for us. I mean, I know I've played him. I had my I flirted with uh, Leshrac for a little while, and I would mid him, and people would let me, and I would get that mid tower down like before ten minutes for sure. Yeah, play a Death Prophet Lashrac, you know? You, you stay in your lane, wait for your mid-opponent to rotate out, and then, yep. oh, Diabolic Edict, your tower's gone, and now I can Bam. rotate every other exactly. two. Exactly. And yeah. and that's what I do. I wait for my opening, and then and and all you need is one opening is Lashrac, and that... In all reality, what you're kind of waiting for is for tower down. your opponent to go gank. Is he the you fastest... You call them missing and do it. Is he the fastest at ripping a tower down? Like, because he could do that at, like, level one, right? You could skill uh... that first. You, you can skill first. It just doesn't do that much damage at level one, especially considering the fact that the creeps are going to be coming every 30 seconds and to gonna interrupt take and take yeah. some of the damage. Uh, I think the most reliable is probably going to be Death Prophet yeah. in terms of getting that early tower. But yeah. Lashrac is certainly up there in terms of his ability to just rip through a tower. I was lucky enough to mid invoker against your Death Prophet, Gorgon. Oh yeah, that was. Uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that I at first I was I I said to Cyphus off mic. I was like, I've never had more competition. Like I've never felt more competitive in my life. <laughs> I wanted to win that lane so bad. I wanted to win with Invoker. I wanted to sun strike in the fountain, but I, it didn't work out. I almost killed Cyphus. Yeah, one when time. He was playing Tusk. Almost. <laughs> I almost killed yeah. him. But yeah, you yeah. kicked ass. <laughs> that, that <laughs> Death Prophet is hard to lane against, and obviously there's there's a little bit of a differentiation between our levels of familiarity with those heroes, probably. Even though I don't play a lot of Death Prophet, she's not a very difficult hero in terms of basic uh, execution. Oh, so And Invoker's so hard. I, and Invoker's very difficult, so I, I think you did a very good job. Me. Thank you. I was I was I was actually quite impressed Thank with you. with your ability to invoke on the go. There was there was a moment that you got away from me killing you because I didn't have any confidence that you'd be able to invoke Ghost Walk yeah. quickly enough. So I just <laughs> I just QQW, go. QQWFR QQWFR dude. That's what I did. The, <laughs> the second that happened QQWFR. Bang. I seriously I literally just walked up to you and I was like I'm not even going to science him because I, I know he did. <laughs> and then he just walked away. From and then me, I was like, like, <laughs> like what was he doing? And then I <laughs> ran to the woods and cried a little and then TP'd home. <laughs> <laughs> It was so, took it, a bath in, in your salty, salty tears. <laughs> yes, I did. And then I went home and probably tried to, you know, meteor blast you guys a couple times or something and did, missed those. I've never killed it. I think I had zero kills. But yeah, so, you know, if whatever. you guys want to, to be able to stomp Roland as... Make me play in poker. Did, uh, did we, we do do in-houses for .p. A panda yeah. and I have been trying you're, to... You're more there more. every single time, man. We're trying to be more and more active on it just because we, we have fun with the community and, uh, we you know... We have celebrities in our... In our in-house. Oh, you know, stop by, say hello. Yeah, yeah. it's been you fun. Know, it, it forced me into playing Ricky, and now I'm in love oh, with Ricky. He's going through his been, uh, been, noob hero stage. I've been, I've been, uh, kidding, I've been Cyphus. creeping on your games a little bit, Cyphus. I've been creeping on your Ricky uh, because I've been doing a lot of waiting for matches. For some reason, my matchmaking is taking forever to find me, so I've been creeping on everybody. You it's know hard what I mean? Search for seven yeah, sure, K players. Sure. I, don't think, yeah. I don't think I've jumped into. A, a game that Cyphus has played in the last three days without seeing him do Ricky. Yeah, he's, he's been spent all over that. He's oh, yeah. been hooked. <laughs> we had a game last night that was really fun where I passed my Slark with him. I was Slark and he was Ricky. And it was so awesome where I got a Shadow Blade uh, second, my second big item. I went Scott D first, I think. But I got the Shadow Blade and I would just chill with Ricky and be like, all right, who you want to go on? And we'd be like, all right, let's go on this guy. And then he'd be like, smoke screen, I pounce in, I press my Q, and then we I just am, shing, I, shing, I shing, am, I am. So the first like dead. five games I played, or no, nah, I won't say first five. The first three to four games I played as Ricky, I was not using that uh, Diffusal Blade at all. Yeah, I've, I've I, noticed it, that. Yeah, I, it was I've, bad. I've, I've, yeah. In fact, I, I bugged some of the .p people to harass you about it. Those oh, yeah. harassing no, messages they, that you got to remind yeah. you that, that I was I was the... The person the culprit. Who, who I happen. knew it was yeah. bad because I, yeah, I had, I, I get hit up by Denomalus, Curbside, Joe Schmo, everybody. <laughs> like, hey. I just, I mentioned it. I mentioned it. I mentioned <laughs> it. Never just diffusal and the you influence should. you have, Gorgon. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, it's no. it's forced me to use the diffusal blade, and now it's it's second oh, it, nature. And so we, something that you need to be aware of if you're not, and your listeners should be aware of I as well, especially considering Ricky is a really really good hero at a more inexperienced level play because people yeah. are less likely to buy vision oh absolutely um diffusal blade you can purge dust off of yourself with it. yeah that roland just I told, just me told that. him that. just told yeah. me that. and he was that like what huge. and even wazoo yeah. was like what yeah I yeah something and new. you know where i learned that when gorgon was playing phantom lancer and he had a diffusal blade and he kept buying diffusal blade over and over 
because he needed the charges. Oh they yeah, kept dusting him. I started. I've, this I've was been back buying... on like six point eight one Gorgon back when yeah, like we first started playing. And I remember you doing that and me being like, "What the fuck? How do you keep getting away?" And you just kept diffusing yourself. And you That's kept buying the yeah buying new diffusal blades. I think you got like three that game. Yeah, I think I got it. a level one, a level two, and then the game went long enough that I sold my level two and yeah. bought a level two right And we away. won that game, and that was the game where I was playing, like, Ogre Magi, I think, with you guys. It was, like, you, Panda, Mally. I think that's, like, the first game I ever played with Mally. And you were playing Phantom Lancer, and it was badass. Back when, like, Phantom Lancer wasn't reworked. Yeah, back Phantom when he was Lancer. a carry instead of a mid-game <laughs> damage dealer. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's really different now. I think, I think he's really good right mm -hmm. now, actually, but he does not hold the same yeah, role. Yeah, it's a different role for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad I beat you to telling Cyphus that, even though I learned it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Give you that, that moment of clarity. <laughs> yeah. No, that is, that is great to know. And I yeah. have gotten to the habit where, I mean, I go through... I get that first defusal blade. I burn through those eight charges. I grab the neck, the recipe to take it to a, a level two. A, yeah, level mm -hmm. two, and then I'll fucking sell that thing and grab another defusal blade. Yeah, you can't. You have you to not? have it. Oh, and you're How good you with not? it too. It's cool when you like notice, like you check your surroundings. You look, you do a whole three sixty, and you're like, okay, this dude's alone. Yep. And then you're like, all right, I'm gonna hit him I'm with like, the defusal okay, blade. Punch is dead. <laughs> yeah. And then he does a little circle like a dog trying to lay down on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. what I do. Yeah. Boom! Smoke. smoke cloud. Shink, 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 shink. Uh, oh, so kill. It's like so it lame. I went 28 no uh, earlier today. <laughs> oh my god. It's yeah. sad. I feel bad for the people out there that are like, God, I wish we knew how to counter him. <coughs> Sentries and oh, yeah, smoke. Sentry. Yeah. Just buy a sent like, No, oh, I'm a madman. I carry, is... I carry two to four sentries on me at all times now, as Ricky. So this is this is one of the things wording. that yeah. this is one of the reasons why I think Broodmother and and I've said this publicly before, but I will continue to say I think Broodmother is kind of a trash hero. I don't think she's very good, very easily counterable. Like for by the same 50 reason heroes, he is. by like fifty heroes is Broodmother countered. I completely agree. I love Broodmother under the right circumstances. Oh yeah, but, but she's definitely a niche pick. But, yeah. Oh, such a niche pick. Like um, pretty much everybody with crowd control counters her. She's actually right now. There's something really interesting happening in pro Dota, which which. Broodmother right now has a huge, huge, huge spike in pick ban. She spiked up to 35% ban, wow. but she only has a 6% pick rate. So it's like they... It's an all ban driven... That's if they don't have crowd control. They're probably like, okay, we don't have crowd control. Let's ban Broodmother because she could really take advantage of this and let's move on. Yeah, you see it sometimes, but but honestly, I think it's it comes down to more that teams are... are she has a positive win, win rate right now. A, a fairly wow. significant positive what, win like rate. like 52, 53? I think it's in the 60s. Whoa, okay. At least last time I checked, it was up there. I, I can pull up the data right now. That's because she's only, look. in her niche games, she wins. Right. Yeah, you exactly. Know? That's but why. she's also only being played, for the most part, by a couple of people. And that is helping her just, just wildly. Oh, okay, so for 6.83, for the new patch, she only has a 40% win rate. Yeah, but makes sense. for 6.82, the patch as a whole... Uh, which, you know, she was brand new back in. She had a 61% win rate. Wow. So yes. she, she was doing very, very well. But uh, th this is, I don't think she's very good in professional Dota uh, at that level because mm. good teams are going to win anyway. It, Without she's so She's so dependent on a team being forced to ignore her. Yeah. Basically, she stays in one lane almost all the time. She just pushes down towers and rats out, but so much more so than a nature's prophet or another traditional rat. She really has that infrastructure. She has in to the build lane. the infrastructure to do it, and that's yeah, what it, I love about her. For her first ten minutes of laning, on average, in professional Dota, she gets less gold than passive gold. So on average, if she stayed in Fountain and did nothing, she would have more gold at the end of ten minutes than wow. if she went to lane. And if you take Ice 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 out of that, who is arguably right now the world's most successful Broodmother player, uh, if you take him out of that, it's really notable. Like, probably the first 15 minutes, I would not be surprised to see Broodmother negative because gold. Because she's dying? Because she's buying consumables. She's often dying. Uh, okay. uh, and she's, she's not maintaining that gold income. She's not able to last hit successfully. And then if she you include the fact... That mm -hmm. she's giving Spiderling gold to her opponents, and if you were to factor yeah. that in, oh, that yeah. lost gold, then mm -hmm. she's she's probably negative in terms of the yeah. amount of gold. That, although that stat is very difficult to actually oh. work out. Dude. She's she she literally provides the gold for your opponents to buy the counter for her. Yeah, and I, that's what I don't like about her. It's, she's yeah, just so easy to count. I I was playing this game as techies with Cyphus and Wazoo the other day, um, and we were against the Broodmother. 
And she kept falling for my tricks, dude. I couldn't believe it. Like, she would literally just, like, sit on top of my uh, ult bombs. Well, you know where to mine is techies. It's anywhere yeah. there's a spider And web. one landmine would kill her whole brood. I had, like, 8,000 gold that I, after having a Bloodstone, after having a Yules, after having uh, Boots of Travel. Yeah. Like, after having Soul Ring, like, I just, I, I, and we lost this game. Because, like, we just, I think we didn't have enough carry or something like that. But this broodmother was the, like, didn't get it at all. That, like, Brood, yeah, I can kill you. She's you know? really good, and I suspect this is probably what happened, even though I did not watch the game at all. My suspicion is that broodmother did what broodmother is good at, and that is being such an obvious target that the, the rest of her team got big. Yeah, well, yeah, she was. She, well, we all stressed out immediately. It was like, oh, shit. Broodmothers in their safe lane, our off lane. Let's yep. get somebody down there to take care of it immediately. And, and we then you send two three guys. Yeah. yeah, you send two or three guys, and then that means they have four people around the map farming free. And uh, hey. that's really what she's good at. That and split pushing, but oh, she just provides so many counters to herself. It is. That it's, it's just yeah. there's probably forty heroes you do not want to see as broodmother. Pro yeah. I, I thirty or forty. Like I can think of like ten right now that I hate yeah. seeing. As Broodmother. Axe, I, I am hard-pressed to think of a, a squad. Like, like a, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to think of Zeus. a five-man squad that I would not think could be a team with a Broodmother. Yeah. If Same. they just played right. coordinated. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, a reasonable Absolutely. squad. A squad you'd normally see. Not, I'm not talking like Io, Chen, Enchantress. Uh, and, and I know the, what you're talking about. You know, yeah. you know, but, well, do, do all of you? A, a reasonably built squad. Yeah. Um, Gorgon. We've had a quarter of an hour with you. Not quarter of an hour. Hours aren't 100 minutes. Hours are 60 minutes. We've had almost half an hour with you. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and it's been really wonderful again. Thanks for coming on. Always insightful, Pleasure. sir. Thanks for letting me ramble for extensive oh, periods of time. I love to we talk love about Broodmother. Yeah. Directly into your ear holes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ear holes. <laughs> that sounds like, ugh. Ugh, like I don't like it sounds no, like I'm, sexual. I'm a circuit for your ear holes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it for you. Get your sound out of my ear holes, Gorgon. <laughs> right, Enjoy right. your week and uh we'll be back again or I'll be back again next week. These guys obviously yep. are gonna have you for another twenty minutes or so. Awesome. Well, we'll hey, see you thank later. you so much, thank everybody. You, my pleasure, guys. Bye bye. Hi. I'm Wazoo. You might know me from such things as I was on dot P for a little while, and that's it. Today I'm here to talk to you about .p's Patreon. Patreon is a website that lets you fund um, your project in different and interesting ways. Think Kickstarter, but with a more monthly backing. It lets you support things in a way that is very personal. It goes directly to the person that is creating the content that you so enjoy. And while, uh, I almost said myself, um, Roland and Cyphus have been doing a great job. I listen to the show every time it comes out. And as someone personal to the project and also outside of it, now that I'm not in, I feel like I'm almost the best spokesman to say, donate if you can, donate if you've enjoyed the show, and um, most importantly, you know, keep participating in the guild and everything else. We appreciate you most of all, and we look forward to building a fantastic community with all of you. And we're back. Uh, yeah, so we hit we so much broodmother talk this this episode. Oh yeah, tons of brood, <laughs> and we've talked about Broodmother in extent, in extent, in in extensively, extensively. Jesus, like I just like literally lost my mind for a second. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we've talked about Broodmother uh, quite well, we've a talked bit. About, we've talked before. about countering Invis heroes, but I don't know. This is, mm -hmm. I I mean, obviously I have Invis heroes. Well, it was mind. fun to even be like, I don't have a hero list in front of me, and it was fun to be able to rattle off like. 15 heroes that I don't want to see. Like, I that's I couldn't do that with Doom. Yeah. Like, I could be like, yeah, I don't, don't want to see... On that list, the oh, shit, as I think about it, the absolute scariest, in my opinion, for Brood, and I know it's just more Brood Mother Talk, but it's Keeper. I, you know, well, he's... Uh, here's the thing that I that I think, if a pro was up against the Keeper of the Light as a Brood Mother, he'd actually be really easy to deal with. Deal with. Just because you would see where he was charging and you would move your whole brood somewhere. Because so long as you have spider webs, you can go through impassable terrain with not just you and your whole brood. And just go in an angle that's not going to get hit by the Keeper of the Light. Yeah. Easier said than done. And of course you're going to get hit with a couple of those throughout the game. And it's hard to build up that brood. It takes mana. It takes time. And once you build up that brood, you want to keep it for as long as you can to rip down that tower or surround that hero and just trap him in spiderlings, basically. So, yeah, Keeper of the Light, 
if I was laning against him, I'd be super conscious of where he was and when he was charging. But the second he gets an Aghanim Scepter where he's just like ghost putting them wherever, you know, and you yeah, can't sure, tell sure. where they are. At that point, I think you would just have to forfeit as Broodmother. Yeah. yeah. He would Let's stop talking about Broodmother. I don't. What's wrong with Broodmother? <laughs> We've really just talked cool about hero. Broodmother so much. Because she's. No. Cause she, no. no, she's captivating. She really is. Because it's a hero that, like. Has all the potential in the world, but yet never. I want to see. I want to see a different. I want to see something altogether new with Broodmother. They would have personally. to. They would have to completely recreate Broodmother um, to make her viable, really, in my opinion. Just because so she's the one hero that I can think of that like so many heroes counter. I can't think yeah. of another hero that is countered by so many other heroes. I'd like to see her with like a nature's prophet esque like teleport between spider webs. Yeah, like a tunnel. Like, she has a little web tunnel. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, whatever the hell you want to call it. But essentially sure. a teleport from... So she could get away. You, well, and just to see... Just for her to have presence in other lanes. Yeah. You make, know. Make it so she could roam. Yeah, leave yourself... A, you know, what if Broodmother's stick was... I think you could still keep was... the eight nets, too. I think eight oh, yeah. nets would be plenty. So long as you could go from net to net. Yeah. And make it a little micro thing that costs a little bit of mana to do. Well, and to leave a brood behind. Yeah. You know? It'd be cool. I don't know. Anyway, no, that's a, hey, that's, that's a pretty good idea. I think that's the rework I'd like to see. That's, but that's me at a, you know, 1572 MMR. What, well, what the fuck do I know? You know what? We Enough talk about Broodmother and enough talk about this. Let's oh, so one quick, yeah, well, one 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 quick bit of business for the show. Um, Joy Thief is working on, uh, he I uh, he got hit up specifically with all the did. fake facts. I know he did. I didn't see any of them. He said he got tons. Yeah, he did. Um, and he was like, what do I do? And I said, well, pick, pick. Either pick your favorite, or and we're random. gonna award it that way because yeah. it was his idea, or he random can pick like generator. yeah, and or na- a random number generator. Or I told him you know pick a few and just and send them to us, and we'll we'll help you pick. Yeah, because um, I'd like to see some of the best ones anyway. Yeah, we got a couple to the show account, but they I did click on Joy Thief's Twitter account and I read a couple and they were funny. Yeah, yeah. I want to see some of the funnier ones. So, People got creative for yeah. for that. So Joy Thief, if you're hearing, if you've got them, send them this way. And uh, we can't award that set until, like, January 1st anyway with all these weird so, trade restrictions. I think it's, like, a week or something. There's got to be some reason for it. And it sucks because, like, for giveaways, it's like, you won in two weeks. Congratulations. Yeah. When this set is unlocked, we will then oh, send it so to you. It's so ridiculous. It but makes it hard for us to be giving. Yeah, we're going to have to, like, plan in advance with sets. Well, and, that's like, what, so what, sets. So what Eric did is he bought five sets, and then he random number generated whoever in the guild, got the five. Um, and then it's like, okay, in a week you can have these sets, but congratulations. Like that's yeah. just how it has to be. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate. So please be understanding mm-hmm. it. These are the new valve trade restrictions and all that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we'll get the, we'll get the Templar assassin set, which wow. yeah, I'm on Templar uh, assassin. Yeah. That's too bad. I, you don't have, I, ha- I do have three Templar assassin sets. Oh um, wow. Yeah. I just, cause when they, bu- when they pop up, <laughs> I mean, I've been playing Dota two for like 200 days now and I don't know if a day has gone by where I haven't up that like day daily uh deal. i don't usually but i did today i picked up the um the announcer pack yeah the announcer pack yeah, the too. clockwork because i don't have a make a kill announcer yeah and so, i was like yeah well, i'll take one should uh, i keep bumping this desk? especially playing ricky you know yeah, i'm getting I, some make kills later i bought every single one so <laughs> oh I, my god the heroes i don't have sets with are heroes that don't have sets are the heroes that i don't have sets with at this point and it's i just like my heroes to look you know good on the battlefield i like to wait until i develop a relationship with the hero you know um i've developed a relationship with them all that's why i have a set with them yeah, all. yeah okay whatever you say I, pretty much other than earth spirit but he's like the ugly redheaded cousin anyway oh i heard a funny jo- joke from joy thief i'm gonna tell this oh, no. joke and I'm, I'm gonna probably butcher it but um yeah it said it, it, shadow fiend says who would have thought a ginger had a soul when he killed wind ranger <laughs> it's something like that. It was obviously yeah. put put together much more eloquently, uh, but yeah, he gets a soul when he kills Wind Ranger. So gingers do have souls. So gingers do have souls. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's the hilarious. Proof. Or it was like proof that gingers have souls. Shadow Fiend killed Wind Ranger. Yeah. All right. Okay, all let's right. end it on that note. Let's end it on a low, low, yeah. low um, note. I'm, I'm all about it. If you want to find the show, we're at defenseofthepatients.com. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at .p underscore show. You can find us on Facebook by searching Defense of the Patients. And our favorite iTunes where you can swing by, leave the show a review, and uh, subscribe where you can get it auto-downloaded to your phone or whatever listening devices your kids are out there using these days. And finally, the Patreon's up. Uh, we got some cool rewards. In fact, we just came up with another one tonight, I think. Uh, $2 to uh, create a last hit news. 
Yeah, so if you guys have if you have a funny last hit news write up, we'll make Roland read it in his his bad straight faced Tom yeah. Brokaw voice. Yeah. That isn't Tom Hello, Brokaw. And well. welcome to Last Hit News. Yeah. Except yeah. I put effects on it too. Yeah. So uh, if you want to hear you want to hear Roland read your last hit news, swing by and that'll be up a little later. We'll change we'll add that we'll extra add that. reward. It takes two seconds to do. Uh, so yeah. So two bucks. And then uh, we'll we'll give a buck to the the upcoming guild tournament whenever we get yep. enough collected. So Yes we will. All right, well, I think that's it. So until next time, this is Cyphus for Roland and Gorgon saying good luck and Godspeed. We can all live and be happy together. Yeah. Oh, yeah.